Cool. So who here is an RA member? I'm guessing, yeah, I knew. What? That's awesome. That is way more people than I expected, and that makes me super excited. So thank you. Uh, I guess you can write our CEO and tell us if I do a bad job, because you're technically like my bosses, because we're member-owned. I probably shouldn't have said that. Also, the irony of me doing a talk on long-form content and starting with a 94-second video is not lost, uh, but that's what I got, and we only have so much time. So I'm going to show a couple short examples today. Nothing. I'm not going to play a 30-minute video today. Don't worry. OK, let's talk about short form. So in the B2C world, especially in the outdoor space, we're seeing like a super big trend towards short form content, things 15, 30 seconds in length. We're talking GIFs, uh, photography, um, tweets, uh, just a move towards more and more short content. And uh, yeah, I know, I have, to, I have to have a meme to demonstrate what I'm talking about with short form content. But uh, you know, I don't want to diss on short form too much. It, it works, and we use it a lot, right? Especially in social media. So uh, I think it has a really strong place when you're talking about making quick brand hits, brand impressions, kind of staying top of mind, uh, just having that short little engagement with a member, a visitor, a customer, uh, and then letting them get back to what they're doing. Um, short form works great for those, those types of places. In social media, where you have competing messages and limited attention, sometimes it's best to present your message and get out of the way. Likewise, uh, if you have kind of paid media distribution partnerships or, or, or content uh, partnerships. Um, those people are out on other websites, uh, potentially trying to learn something, trying to buy something. Uh, they've have, they come to those websites with different intentions in mind, and sometimes it's best to, to say your message, speak your piece, and then let, let them get back to what they're doing. So if you're interrupting, short form content often works uh, best. And then lastly, you know, with our mobile devices, and I'm gonna talk a bit more about mobile later, uh, but you have to recognize if you're pushing things out on mobile, that, that that content could be seen in any place. They could be on the bus, they could be at work. So uh, short content often is best because you might be hitting somebody on the go. So here's an example of short form content from just like a month or two ago that we put out that worked really well. Uh, rooftop tents, car top tents are, uh, kind of a, a hot trend this summer, and uh, our content creative team just put out a quick little hyperlapse uh, video on, on one brand, Tapui. Uh, I'll play that for, for you now. It's only about 30 seconds, no sound, so I can talk over it. Uh, but this was a super engaging piece of content uh, that well outperformed most of our social media benchmarks. Uh, 420,000 views, almost 6,000 shares, and then, you know, it's not just about impressions and shares with this kind of content. We also saw 171% lift to associated product and category pages uh, related to this brand and this category of products. So um, just an example of short form content that does work for us, so I'm not hating on it. Uh, we also have some really great success with um, hacks, tips, tricks, pointers, kind of blog posts around camping, camp cooking tent repair, uh, you know, often just photo, uh, quick line of text, maybe a GIF, maybe a, a short form 15 second video, um, a series of these built into a blog post. We can pull those pieces out, put them on Pinterest, send them out in social media. Uh, really great engagement and, and people are eating it up. But short form, I do believe, has its limits, right? So uh, especially like talking about the video that I played about the REI brand and our, our story as a co-op, that was a pretty concise version of it. But there's a lot more message behind there that we like to communicate about our love for the outdoors, about our shared passion with our members for the outdoors. And when you're talking really short form content, there's only so much message that you can convey. Uh, it's really hard to create meaningful engagement with your audience on those. That's where I think you have to stop looking at short form and start thinking about long form. So just a quick definition, so we're all kind of on the same page. This is, this is a loose definition, but I'm really thinking anything over 1,500 words or over three minutes if it's video. Uh, the real point is uh, short form content where you're really just grabbing somebody's attention for a brief moment and interacting with them and then letting them go versus something where somebody has to stop, drop what they're doing, and like hang with you for a few minutes. That's the, the real dichotomy that I'm trying to set up here. So I'm going to ask you guys to believe. I think, I think to start making the investment in long-form content is kind of takes a little step uh, of belief that, that long-form content has a role and has potential, uh, oh, this is getting cut off, um, in, in your marketing mix. So uh, what this says is long-form uh, equals greater potential to create emotion and meaning. And this gets back to that having a longer message, having more meaning to convey, and trying to create a deeper relationship with your audience. And this relates back to our, our type of business, us as a co-op, uh, being member-owned, not driven by shareholders. Um, 
we are there to be a service to our members, and often that is to sell a piece of gear and get them equipped to go outside and have fun. But the outdoor journey isn't just about sales, right? It's about getting inspired and getting stoked for your weekend. It's about learning a new activity. It's about discovering places to go outside. It's about sharing uh, and passing on uh, the awesome stuff that you've done that morning. I mean, if you ever go to REI on a Monday morning, the first thing we all do is get together and just talk about what we did on the weekend, and it's kind of like a little bit of like a contest to see who did the most like badass thing. Um, but that's that's literally like the first hour of a Monday morning. <laughs> Um, but, you know, we recognize that the customer journey really does involve uh, a lot of different stages here. And um, as, as a member-owned co-op, we have the luxury and permission from our C-suite to really appeal to all stages of that outdoor journey, not just focus on gear. It turns out that's also really good for business, and that's why I think, you know, the takeaway from everybody in who here doesn't work for a co-op is that we've seen that when you approach all stages of the customer journey, you really are effectively building that brand, building that relationship, building engagement, and having a much more deep and meaningful relationship with your customers than when you're only talking to them for short periods of time at a very specific point in their sales journey. Okay, I'm gonna move on now and talk a little bit about some examples of what we're doing from long form at REI, again, falling under the kind of definition I presented earlier. Uh, I don't expect you to read this, it's really small, kind of, shrunk it down to make a point. Uh, we have a library of articles, there's about 450 of them, uh, called Expert Advice. It's a learning library of how-tos. Uh, this is one article, how to choose running shoes, obviously a bit more uh, tailored to the, the buying stage. This is a 3,500 word article. We cover everything from the types of running shoes to pronation, overpronation, uh, running style, um, how to fit running shoes. And uh, we've seen really great engagement with this type of content. People spend over five minutes per page. It's a huge natural search driver, organic search driver for us. And overall, uh, these, are, these are long form pieces of content that are performing really well for us. They average 3,200 words. Uh, one interesting stat that I found as I was digging through for this presentation, uh, people are spending 5.5 minutes on mobile devices on these articles and only five minutes on desktop. So I think you often hear that people aren't reading on mobile, well, this is evidence that we're seeing that people are actually engaging deeper and more meaningfully with our long form how-to articles on mobile devices. And this kind of makes sense, right? Like we have articles on how to adjust the rear derailleur on your bike. And if you're on your mobile device, you probably, because you're in your garage and you have your bike in front of you and you're like you know, fiddling with that, you're like replaying the video and then you're like looking at the diagram and like going back and you're spending some really quality time engaging with it like as you're doing it. And then lastly, uh, another piece of, uh, I don't know, rah-rah for this section of our site. Uh, you know those little links at the bottom of the page that say like, got feedback? So how many people here have ever clicked on that to say something nice? Wow, there's, oh, I got, I got two, cool. Yeah, right, that's kind of like, I, I don't, cesspool of the internet might be too strong of a word, but it's definitely like where we have strongly worded feedback and criticism, right? We mostly say negative things on there. What's really interesting is that on our expert advice library, more than half the comments that get left from those links are actually positive. Just somebody dropping a kudos saying, thanks, this helped me, uh, really appreciate this, uh, you guys did a great job. And it, consequently, it's the most positively reviewed section on REI.com. We just get stunning, glowing feedback on a daily basis about the articles that we have out there in the world. So expert, expert advice is one example of written content that works really well. I also wanna talk about video. Um, in the spring, we launched our first uh, uh, content-driven marketing campaign uh, around three different trails across the United States. Um, we told really interesting and inspirational stories from each of those trails and put uh, six to 10 minute videos at the forefront of our marketing efforts around that content. So that video is called Trail Angel. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, it features Ponytail Paul, who's the guy uh, you saw. He's, he's what we call a trail angel, someone who shows up for through hikers, people hiking the Pacific Crest Trail or the Appalachian Trail who spend months at a time in the wilderness. Uh, and he provides just bits of trail magic. So whether that's showing up with hot dogs or donuts or beer, uh, other people, you know, give lifts to people as they cross the highway, getting them into town, let them stay in their yard uh, for a couple nights and, and kind of have a break from the trail. Um, and, and we kind of get in in that piece into the story behind Paul and, and the, the struggles that he's overcome in his life and how he finds kind of balance and, and meaning in, in being a trail angel. 
This is a six minute video. It has almost three million views. Um, on YouTube, the average visitor gets 50% of the way through it, which I think for YouTube, at least by our benchmarks, is, is really successful. And then I think really impressively, for people who, have, who engage with this content on our website, 73% of them watch the entire video, all six minutes. So I think short form, long form, if you can get anybody, to, if 75% of anybody to hang with your entire piece of content on your site, you probably have a good story to tell. A couple other examples of long form content that we're doing across different mediums. Uh, we've been working with a group called the Dirtbag Diaries, doing a series of podcasts that are 15 to 30 minutes in length, exploring different avenues of the outdoors. Uh, a really great opportunity to kind of hit a niche uh, podcast market and, and tell stories in a different, in a different medium. We've also been uh, working with production companies on producing longer video. Frank in the Tower is a 10 minute video on uh, a guy who, he's, he's a quirky guy, you guys should check it out. Uh, he's climbed the Devil's Tower a couple hundred times uh, and he's, you know, I think he's in his 70s or 80s now and still out there climbing and, and just an awesome character. Uh, in that, as part of that Trails campaign, we also had two other uh, videos that were around 10 minutes, one on uh, this uh, ultra marathoner named Errol who Again, if you're seeing a theme, it's an interesting personality. And then lastly, you know, we've been working on long form content on our blog. So, so we've had long form written content in kind of a how-to uh, learning mentality. We're also looking at long form content more in an inspirational capacity. So we told the story of two friends who, uh, or a friend who, who lost um, a buddy in, in action in war, uh, and to commemorate his, his life, they hiked the Appalachian Trail, and, and it's kind of the story of their whole, whole journey and, and finishing the Appalachian Trail. So those are a couple examples of, of what you're doing. I think you can kind of see how uh, our role uh, as, as a co-op and uh, looking to serve our members across their, their outdoor journey uh, comes to life in the kind of stories that we tell and the kind of places that we try and serve them, whether that's inspiring them with other people out there in the wild or, or whether that's helping them learn a new activity.